to introduce you results, our first results of the analysis of connectivity of high conservation value forests along Finnish Russian border. Within this BioCarelia project, we are doing certain uh, steps to analyze the connectivity, to look to the fire regime and to develop models to evaluate the biodiversity and forecast the forest fires. That's why in, uh, uh, we will have a series of webinars where we would like to communicate the results of our studies. And today we present like a basis for the further analysis, uh, which is uh, uh, evaluation of the connectivity on landscape level. If we will start to look to the what are the categories of high conservation value forests in Finland and in Russia, in generally we could split those categories into protected and non-protected. Uh, there are certain similarities like both in Finland and Russia, they are state protected territories, there are national park, but for example in Finland the difference is that there are also private protected territories, so that some individuals or owners of the territory decided to make protection of the territory. While in Russia, there are a bigger number of categories. And uh, for example, there are uh, state protected territories which are aimed to protect special features like Zakazniks, or there are also uh, territories so-called natural mon monuments. At the same time, not all high conservation value forests are protected in Finland and Russia. For example, in Finland, some of the private uh, owners are owning the forests, uh, uh, which is having a certain conservation value, which is not protected. And, and also in Russia, there are uh, a lot of old growth forests which are owned by the state and very often leased by private companies, for example, for wood harvestings. And those are also excluded from protection. In this project, we started to look uh, different approaches, how we could treat uh, or how we could identify the high conservation value forests. And then we've got an idea that uh, taking to account the structure of existing data, we would like to define uh, uh, for this particular analysis. Of course, it's like not absolute truth. It's just one of the approaches that uh, uh, we define old growth forests as practically all the forests with the age more than 99 years. In order to uh, uh, analyze it further, we wanted also to, to look into the spatial structure of protected high conservation value areas within our uh, 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 project study area. So I would like to uh, tell you that in Bio Karelia project, we are uh, wor working with border regions. So in Finland, uh, from Finnish side, it's uh, Liek, Sailomansi, yeah, and Kuchmo and uh, uh, from Russian side is practically we are talking two border rayons. So it's Muizorsky rayon and Kostamushsky rayon. And if you would look to this border zone uh, 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 and if you look to the distribution of the area, practically uh, uh, 85% of the total protected area is in Russia, so and it's represented in Russia by seven patches. While in Finland, the uh, share of protected territories uh, of, from this the whole this area is 15%, which is represented by a, a bigger fragmentation, so bigger number of fragments, so it's almost 50 times more than in Russia number of fragments, so it's 450 patches. So we could see clearly from this map that practically there are different approaches. While Russia is protecting big homogeneous area in Finland, due to several reasons, uh, it is possible to protect a network of fragmented areas. Uh, if we would look how this may change in future, there are also plans, for example, in Russia, Republic of Karelia published in uh, year 2012, uh, uh, some kind of plan for develop new protected territories. And this plan was finalized by the state decree. And you can see here that this network may have an opportunity to change in future. So if, uh, uh, for example, in Russia side, uh, in Russian side, there would be certain uh, government decisions to expand the network of protected territories. At the moment, we don't see any kind of uh, uh, big expansion of the network of expected of protected territories. If you'll start to look to the what are the key features features of non-protected potentially high conservation value forests. Uh, in Finland, those high conservation value forests are very important to maintain the connectivity between the protected high conservation value forests. Those forests were preserved during at least last 100 years. Those forests represented by mature stands 
with a relatively high share of soil logs and veneer logs. So it means those forests are valuable from an economical point of view. But also in this, uh, uh, on those forests, there could be relatively high amount of dead wood if the, uh, those forests were not very intensively managed in the past. So the forest, those forests are important for biodiversity, but if the amount of the dead wood is high, so it means the fire risk is also uh, higher in those forests comparing to others. Since in Russia all the forests are state owned, in Russia there were many times uh, declarations about introducing concept of intensive forest management, but due to different legislative normatives, this concept is not yet started to be implemented in a wider scale. So uh, it means that majority of the forests which are leased by the companies also are presented by pristine forests practically without uh, any intensive forest management. There are attempts in Republic of Karelia to intensify the forest, but at the moment uh, 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 the share of those kind of attempts is very small. So we are talking about maybe something like few hundreds of hectares of intensive forest management in Republic of Karelia. So in general, in uh, uh, those areas, there are a very high amount of dead wood, and of course those forests are both important for preserving the biodiversity and also uh, when you evaluate the fire risk. But the common challenge between Finland and Russia is how to map remaining not protected uh, high conservation value forests in order to be able to evaluate the connectivity. We did analysis of different approaches, and uh, for this particular pro uh, project, we suggested to combine forest management data with remote sensing data. In, uh, 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 for the territory of Finland, the forest management data is publicly available, so which can be downloaded from Forestry Center and uh, in a vector format, so it's practically vector polygon, polygons with uh, stand characteristics, which and where the most important uh, characteristics are the age of the stands. And usually the age of the stand is evaluated quite precise because if the stand was planted, so the, uh, uh, day, the year of establishment of the stand is known, or it could be also verified in the field uh, by uh, extracting increment cores and counting the tree rings. And uh, uh, additionally, for this, uh, uh, for the Finnish part of the database, we downloaded the data on protected territories from Finnish Environmental Institute. In Russia, due to our previously implemented project uh, Carlens, we made a quite a lot of efforts in uh, develop in uh, developing the uh, uh, stand database. So practically within our Carlin's project, what we did, we collected all information about the stand structure and uh, uh, this information was digitized and verified in the field. And uh, it's a quite similar structure of the data like in uh, Forestry Center in Finland. So it means from this, this perspective, the structure of the data is comparable. Uh, uh, for some of the areas, the data sets are quite old, so like from 90s, 80s, but then there are also uh, areas where uh, the data sets were relatively fresh. So we, what we did, we also, for both of the data sets to Finland and to Russia, we, uh, we executed inquiry to the database and extracted all the stands which were uh, 99 years old or older at the year 2021. When we extracted those stands, what we did the next, uh, because uh, the, uh, some, especially for Russian side, the uh, forest management data was not updated sometimes. So in certain areas, uh, the data was outdated. In order to update this information, we used satellite data. Uh, so we collected the time series of satellite images, mainly from Landsat and Sentinel data, which is publicly available from internet from 1985 to 2019. And then we constructed the um, cover of uh, 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 clear cuts or, or fires or wherever sources of loss. So it could be some construction of corridors or some uh, uh, new roads or etc. And uh, uh, those uh, uh, this mask was used to update the data and in other words to clean or to remove the polygons which were in the database as a uh, 99 years old stance but they were not existing in reality. So we cleaned and updated this information with satellite data in order to get the final coverage. So as a result of this analysis we've got this distribution of uh, high conservation value uh, forests from our point of view along the border 
And if we would uh, look to the uh, uh, structure and distribution of those patches, there were totally 183 forest patches, which are crossing the border. So it means those stands all growth stands still existing and they are touching both from Finnish side and from Russian side. So there is a certain continuity. So it means if we look to the border practically within our study area, we are talking about not only 183 forest patches, but we are also talking about 183 potential fire crossing corridors. So if you think of the concept or if you would imagine some le uh, big landscape fires, so it means the possibilities to cross the border would exist in those uh, 183 corridors. And then we were interested to look what is the importance of those corridors or what is the importance of those patches uh, uh, for uh, both for Finland and Russia. And uh, in order to be able to answer the question, what are the most important connectors between the patches between two countries? To do this, we used morphological spatial pattern analysis, this uh, approach developed and by GRC and applied to in many parts of Europe. And uh, it consists of the two stages. First, we at first stage, we run this morphological spatial pattern analysis in order to identify the role in the landscape of each of the uh, patch. So, for example, the role could be the core area, it could be the bridge, it could be, uh, for example, loop or branch or edge. And in detail, you can see the link to the publication. And this was carried out, this was done using this Guido's toolbox, which is also publicly available. And uh, if you're interested, you can reproduce this data. Then what we did, we used the results from morphological spatial pattern analysis to further uh, uh, to analyze it further uh, uh, using this kind of uh, uh, network analysis, which allows us to evaluate the connectivity importance of each node or each link in the network. In other words, to calculate the relative importance of the different forest patches in preserving the structure along the border. And uh, as you can see, of the, uh, as you can see on this result, so uh, it's not equal all over the border. So if you take the biggest patches or the most important patches, the uh, highest kind of priority or the highest importance is uh, practically in this Karhukolmia area from in this Muizorsky rayon and Russian side, and then close to Friendship National Park and uh, Kostomuchsky Strict Nature Reserve. Uh, if we look to the distribution of those connectors and uh, if you think about uh, potential future changes, it's quite important to also to see what are the expected changes in the fire risks due to the climate change. According to recent studies in this area, uh, the potential increase in number of days with higher fire risk could be in future under, under different uh, uh, climate change scenarios could increase from uh, 15 to 98 percent, which is relatively high. So it means that probability of the fires crossing the border in the future most likely will increase. So if we try to look to the structure of old growth forests along the along this uh, along the border, we could come to the following conclusions. First of all, the biggest nodes of high conservation value forests are along the border at the moment. The functional connectivity along the border is represented by 45 nodes, which is connecting or most important patches, which is connecting uh, the structure and uh, represented by 13 links. Links are small patches connecting more than 95% of the nodes. All nodes in Finland at the moment are protected territories, while uh, only two nodes in Russia are protected territories. So it means majority of the nodes in, is still exist in Russia, but those leased by the companies and those, for example, in case of uh, connectivity, one of the most important patch, which is located in this uh, uh, Karhukolme area in this Muizorsky rayon, it's now leased by the wood harvesting company Segeja Group, which is carrying out uh, co uh, harvesting. Actually, Segeja Group made yesterday IPO on uh, on market and attracted a lot of investments into uh, development of their business. So there is a very high probability that in future they would uh, intensify harvesting in this area, which is extremely important at the moment and it is not protected. 
So under moderate climate emissions, under the moderate emissions climate scenario, the uh, uh, number of fire days will increase, and it means uh, there is a very high probability that uh, uh, those uh, fires may have biodiversity in future, in uh, hopefully in in a positive way. Three uh, more minutes. Yeah, I uh, I think that's all what I wanted to say today. And if there are, would be any questions, I would be very happy to answer.